Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a Books Beside My Bed video for you where I wrap up the last seven days worth of reading. This is my reading week from the 13th until the 19th of May and I'm talking about four books in this video but I did read a few more and I do have a couple of things on the go but they're all for projects so I'm not going to talk about them today. Stay tuned, they should be coming very very soon. The first book that I want to talk about today is a review copy and it is a young adult title. It is We Could Be Something by Will Kostakis. This is a queer young adult Australian story. It is told in a dual timeline and it is a multi-generational Greek Australian story where we follow a father and a son as they figure themselves out during their formative years. So we start off with Harvey who is the son and he's woken up in the middle of the night by one of his fathers who tells him that they are heading to Sydney because he's leaving Harvey's other dad and they fly across the country from Western Australia to Sydney and they move in with Harvey's grandmother who owns a cafe and together Harvey, his father, his grandmother and his great grandmother live together and we see what's happening in the current day through the eyes of Harvey. Our second timeline is Satyrus who is Harvey's Greek father who as a teen published a book and has forever been chasing the high of publishing another book but has never been successful. We see the rise and fall of Satyrus's relationship as well as Harvey coming to terms with that as well as learning more about his family, figuring himself out and figuring out what he wants to do with his life. And it was a really enjoyable story. Will Kostakis has a great writing style. It read very, very quickly. The story kept moving. And when we jumped into someone else's perspective, the stories always reflected the other. And I had a really great time. The tagline on the back says, part coming out story, part falling in love story, part falling apart story. And that perfectly sums up this story. So it was a really delightful read. I also read a middle grade Australian title Zadie Ma and The Dog Who Chased the Moon by Gabrielle Wang. Gabrielle Wang is our current children's laureate. This is a historical fiction story set in Melbourne. It is 1950s post-war and our protagonist Zadie Ma is Australian born Chinese and she and her family are going through a few things. Her father fought in the war and is dealing with the PTSD of that, although Zadie doesn't realise that that's what that is initially. Her mother is Chinese and runs the family's milk bar and Zadie also has a younger brother and Zadie has always wanted a dog and it's like the one thing she just wants to have and her mother is not having a bar of it. And we learn in the story that Zadie has a superpower. She loves to write. She has notebooks and notebooks of stories that she has written and we actually get to see some of the stories and read them through the text and I'll talk a bit more about them in a moment. Suddenly the things in her stories start coming true. And so she obviously writes a story about having a dog and that dog's name is Jupiter and it becomes a character that Zadie finds and rescues. I was really engrossed in this story because there was a lot going on for Zadie's family. There are a whole host of side characters. Zadie has a new neighbour called Sparrow whose name is actually Eleanor but who is very much gender non-conforming in here. They are a really delightful character that Zadie meets and learns a lot from. There's also an old man who visits the milk bar every Saturday to sit and talk with Zadie because his wife has previously passed away and so this is a connection to community that he has. Along the way as Zadie meets other characters and goes through different experiences she gifts her stories to these characters and the stories reflect things that are happening in their lives and it's a really beautiful sort of way to weave those in. I really love this. I'm glad that I picked it up this month. I also read Reckless Roulette by Alice Winters, which is the first book in the Elite series, which is an MM romantic suspense novella series. I was aware of this one because Maz Maddox has a story coming out within this series. And I just figured I would pick up the first book and see what it's about because it's a shared universe. So this one is essentially about a casino owner who is extremely rude and has about a week left to live because a rival has threatened to have him killed if he doesn't sell his casino to said rival. And so this casino owner decides that he is going to hire an assassin to take out his rival. But what he doesn't realize is that he inadvertently meets said assassin, is incredibly rude to him. And the assassin basically walks up and says, good luck to you, see you later not helping you out. This is a fun little story. It is very fast paced and very entertaining. Have I probably read things that read a little bit better? Yeah, sure. But but for a story about assassins and surviving assassins, this was very cute. And I love the way that the characters had to learn and grow. Our assassin is a tiny little bundle of energy who loves to game and is just a sass bomb walking. And he basically thaws our other hero's little heart because he really needed that to happen. And then the last book that I'm going to talk about in this video is Game Plan by Amy Aislinn. This is book one in the Vancouver Orca series, which is a spin-off of the Stickside series that I finished last week. The hero in this, Matt Shaw, who is a coach, was 
one of the coaches that we met in Star of the Game, which was the last book in the series, he was the skills coach for one of the heroes. In this one, he has been promoted to the head coach of Vancouver's AHL team. And he's kind of disappointed because he was hoping to get a coaching position on the NHL team, but being the head coach of this team is still pretty good and he's determined to help bring this team up from the bottom of the ladder. This is his second chance romance with single dad Pierce. A few years earlier they had a relationship and then Pierce just up and left and there was very little explanation and Matt was left heartbroken. As it turns out Pierce's son in this book he's 20 and happens to be a player on Matt's hockey team but there was an accident and it started to cause Pierce to spiral. So Pierce deals with anxiety and depression in this book and it's quite prevalent because it has affected all of his relationships, including the previous breakdown of his marriage to his wife, as well as his relationship with Matt. When Pierce's son comes back to town to join the team, Pierce follows him and of course he ends up running into Matt and the two of them have never really quite gotten over each other and they have to figure out if they can even make this entire situation work and whether or not it's going to have an impact on Matt's career because He's dating the father of one of his players and there's a whole lot of discussions around that and pushing back against discrimination and all of that kind of thing. And it was really fun. I had a, a great time and I'm looking forward to more books in this series. I think there's another one coming out fairly soon. So those are the books that I have read this week in the comments. I'd love to know if you have read any of them or if you're planning on picking any of them up. Feel free to share that down below. Otherwise, if you just want to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment, feel free to share a moon emoji down below. I hope that wherever you're in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.